What is going on, everyone? And welcome to Cart 63. My name is Ben, and I'm pretty much out of jokes of about my name or introducing myself. Uh, maybe Ben Dover. You know, <laughs> actually, <laughs> funny story. If you call me Dover, I will respond. It's an old nickname from when I used to milk cows. Anyway, uh, I was quite surprised. Uh, first things first, that I missed this this uh, this topic. Uh, chain and belt tension, and that twice this weekend, I was out racing UAS for, for two nights, uh, like I said in the last video, but two different people at two different tracks had mentioned to me about, hey, you never talked about chain tension, and I'm like, did I? I missed that, huh? <laughs> so I am currently uh, putting together my UAS ride again. We're playing a race at this weekend, uh, changing over motors, going from the 270 to 250. I just, I want to try a different carburation uh, see if they work out, but whilst I'm building this, uh, putting the engine on, I'm tensioning the belt, I'm going to have to put the chain on, and I'm going to have to tension that, so I thought we'd dive down, we'd take a peek at that, I explain my idea on this, again, I'm never 100% correct on everything, or at least, you know, for the most part, other people have, may have a different way of going about it or a different idea. And as always, you're welcome to drop that down in the comments. If, if you choose to do it a different way, I, I will accept that. That's <laughs> I could be doing it wrong, but I don't think so. I don't lose chains that often unless it's a super rough track. So anyway, uh, we're going to dive down here real quick. And uh, then we'll pop out for a conclusion after all that stuff. And yeah, okay. See you in a minute. Okay, everyone. You notice, I, I do notice when I'm editing the uh, videos, by the way, that uh, I always say, okay, everyone, like a, a very Mr. Rogers, you know, kind of calm and relaxing. <laughs> Just something I notice when I edit videos. All right, uh, we are talking about chain tension here. Now, obviously, this is going to be different than your clone. It is going to be different than your Predator. Um, if you're running a uh, KT100, this is going to be very similar. All right, uh, I have my pipe off. My pipe would be coming out here. You can't see anything when that is on there, so I do not have it. If you are curious what gear that is, you think that's a mammoth gear. That is a 26 driver. Uh, it's a 54 rear. So uh, going to a big track, need that, that ratio to work out. So uh, I put a brand new chain on this. The other one was a little short. You can, you know, obviously, uh, I, I have a video on breaking down a chain and everything. Uh, but what I missed on it was tensioning. So the motor is loose here. So basically, get the chain over top there. And what I do is I push it forward. If I go for it. Uh, Till there's some tension. Now, what I like to do, even though this is different because it is a two-stroke, it's a jack shaft. All right, here are my butterflies. If you're wondering about this guy, this is an axle collar that I have put on there. Because of the torque of the motor, it has a tendency to pull the, the, the entire engine back and loosen the chain. So this just assists in stopping that to happen. So I like to take the butterflies and I like to somewhat cinch them up. Don't get them tight. Obviously, you just saw me move the engine so they're loose enough that you can, you know, back and forth and, and start getting that uh, tension correct. But it, it, it keeps it in line and everything, and it looks better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what not to do. Two different versions. So give me a second here. All right. We are back. This is what version not to do first off. This, although it looks like it's rotating correct, is too tight. Now, I like to say a half inch of deflection, and you could probably consider that pretty close, but I, this is a, if you're feeling the axle, I'm feeling bind. I don't like that, and, and you know, you get, sometimes you get those chains, not, everything's not perfect. We're, we're on dirt tracks, they get rubbed and bumped and everything. So there's a little bit of a hang up there. It's just too, too tight. And we're back. And this would be too loose. You are running the risk of hitting a bump and losing your chain. Yes, it turns nice and free. You know, oh, great, you know, awesome. <laughs> but you really, and also what this has a tendency to do, so the, even if you are on a, a lower horsepower engine, when your power engages it has a tendency to take this upper and yank forward 
So that is putting a bunch of wear on your rear gear that you do not want. So a, a floppy chain is not only, you know, a danger of actually coming off, you hit a bump, everybody's seen everybody throwing chains, chances are their engine got moved back, they didn't tighten it enough, something like that, you know, this, this may be the case, or... You know, it, it is you know, detrimental to keep it at the correct tension because it will actually start ripping teeth off of here because this yanks. So every time the power hits, you're, you hit the gas, this will rah, and it tries to tear these teeth off. These, these aluminum teeth do not hold up like they used to. Uh, it's not 7075 anymore. There, there's definitely, uh, I think, a lower quality aluminum being used uh, for these uh, for mass production. Totally understand. Cheap people want cheaper. They don't want to spend more. Well, that's what you kind of get. Uh, Hortzman always had great gears, but I, you can't find them anymore. Sorry. And this is what I consider perfect chain tension. There's enough movement, but it still feels solid. It doesn't feel like it's going to come off there. We do have a little bit of, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, banjo thing going on because I, i'm sure that uh i've bent this hub timer timer again <laughs> um but right here uh so even even in your you know if you're rotating and there's a slightly uh we'll find this is probably the tightest spot of the chain there's still this much play and then when you come off of it you come to looser that's uh, just a little bit more i think that is perfect now i do want to show you something i'm going to use my my impact here to kind of demonstrate I'm going to come up here and I'm going to loosen. Sorry for the camera angle. It's kind of hard to difficult, very difficult to do. So if you tighten the rear one first, the tendency is going to be to get a looser chain than if you tighten the front. So if you're if you're wanting to really uh, you know cinch it up and make sure that it's a it's a pretty pretty tight chain, do your front one first or rear one. And I'll try. I'll see if I can demonstrate here. So we're gonna go loose and see see what happens here. Watch my chain. I'm just tightening tightening the back right now, just the one side. So you see how much that dropped. Got quite a bit of play there. All right. now, <laughs> in theory, this will work. If I loosen this, okay, and I tighten the front one first, it puts a tightness into the chain first, and then you do your rear one, okay, and that is right back to where I like it. So just a little little trick that I like to do. Um, getting them perfect, it just takes some practice. It's, it's not overly difficult. Um, I'm gonna throw in here because you know this is a video on belt tension too. I saw this pop up. Now, you have different opinions on this. Some people, uh, this is usually for UAS guys or KT100 guys. So, you know, you uh, just give me a second here, clone and predator people. They talk about this belt being able to move on your rear cog and yes mine does move a little bit but again with the half inch of deflection that is what i look for in belt tension again with the banjo your power's coming from here it's driving this hub every time this engine hits it's going to pull this tight you do not want too much slack here or else it yanks it and it will try and break that belt or try and tear the teeth off. And that's usually not the case with these, these uh, uh, eight millimeter pitch uh, gears, but it is always a good thing to just, just this, just enough. And that would be, you know, your motor mount bolts underneath here. I like to stick a, uh, a screwdriver down in here in my jack shaft, put a little pressure till it feels right and then tighten those bolts up. So. That is my opinion on that, and I hope that helped you guys. We're going to pop back up top and uh, do a closeout okay. here. Okay, well, there you go. That is how to, uh, at least my <laughs> ideas of how to tension a chain, and hopefully that gives you, you know, I know it's a different setup than, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to do. I do not race clone. I do not race predator, 
but the concept is the same. Maybe you're using a little more chain than I am because of the jack shaft system. It is closer to the axle, but the concept is the same. The, the tension is the same. You might have a little more uh, play in there than the half inch of deflection I, I talked about there. Um, there's also like the, what is it called, a chain dragon? Those used to be all the rage years ago. I don't even know if they're legal, if you can run them anymore. Uh, that, but it was, uh, so your chain, you know, went around, it went running around your rear axle, but then it would come up and then down and it was a tensioner, like on, a, on you know, a belt on a, on a car. It, it would tension the chain itself. I don't know how well they work. I, I don't see them that often. So maybe it was, you know, kind of a fad thing back in the day, or maybe there's some of you that still run them and have good luck with them, but beats me, man. I don't run them. <laughs> so, all right, that is gonna do it for day. Uh, if you didn't mind, we always have to do this shtick, don't we? Yeah, for new viewers, of course. Uh, if you didn't mind, hit a like on the video, uh, possibly subscribe to the channel. If this stuff is useful to you, uh, share it out there. Maybe some other people could really use this information for uh, and uh, get them kind of hooked on the Cart 6T3 chain or something like that. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, guys, that's enough. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Later.